coming with uh, yet another fresh topic of diabetes. Uh, today I choose diabetic retinopathy because um, as uh, worldwide uh, estimate of diabetes are on the rise, uh, in our India itself, we can see about 80 million people uh, have been already diagnosed with diabetes. So uh, out of that 80 million people, uh, about one third of them will land up into diabetic retinopathy in their future. This diabetic retinopathy is not so much common uh, condition, which will be definitely encountered in diabetes. But yes, uh, it depends on various factors like uh, what is the duration of diabetes in the patient? How is the patient's glycemic control? Is the patient having hypertension, uh, hyperlipidemia-like factors, other aggravating conditions like smoking? Or if the diabetic patient is having some comorbidities like uh, nephropathy, sometimes neuropathy, or even cardiovascular diseases, they can also land up into diabetic retinopathy. Uh, what is an interesting survey was done on diabetic retinopathy in 2013, in which uh, when estimate was done about causes of vision loss in India, uh, not in India, sorry, worldwide. So diabetic retinopathy was the fifth leading cause of visual loss in patients of diabetes. So we will start today's uh, discussion about the case scenarios, highlighting mainly on the diabetic retinopathy, the classification, uh, what could be their pathophysiology, and uh, most importantly, the management of diabetic retinopathy. Can we proceed with the first slide, Ritika? Okay. So this is the case scenario one. A patient who was a known case of diabetes mellitus since almost 22 years came to my OPD with his ophthalmology reports. His dilated fundus examination and retinoscopy was done and the findings were as follows. Microaneurysms and intraretinal hemorrhages were present in all the four quadrants. Venous beating in superior and inferior quadrant was present. Also, intraretinal microaneurysms was present in the inferior quadrant of the eye. My question is, what is your probable diagnosis looking at the ophthalmology report of this patient? As you must be knowing that there are two basic types of diabetic retinopathy, NPDR and PDR. NPDR meaning non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy and PDR meaning proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So let us have a look on the options given below. A, moderate NPDR. B, severe NPDR. C, very severe NPDR. And D, PDR, that is proliferative diabetic retinopathy. You can pour your answers in the chat box given below. So we have the first question related to the case scenario given to us. So please write your answers on the chat box. We'll be taking it from there. So we do have few answers here. Severe NPDR, that is by Dr. Sanjeet Singh. Dr. Dilip has written moderate. Okay, we have uh, we have mixed answers here not an issue you can uh, write whatever according to your knowledge it's okay if it, it, it is wrong not an issue so maximum has written severe npdr okay but there are few who has also given moderate npdr okay and one or two have written very severe Maximum answer goes with moderate NPDR. Okay. Should we wait for more options or uh, should we proceed? We are still getting a moderate NPDR. Okay. Any, yeah, 
we have one more Dr. Yoga who have written severe NVIDIA. Option B. Okay. So I think, uh, Doctor, we can start with the explanation here. Okay. So before I proceed uh, with the explanation, let me uh, let me tell you the correct um, answer is option. Doctor, uh, one of the doctors had written PDR as if. Okay. Yes. So we actually have all the four options selected by our attendees. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Yes, doctor, we can start with the explanation. Uh, Chalo, I proceed with the explaining uh, the options. Before that, uh, I would like to tell you the correct answer is C, which is a very severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Now, when we say diabetic retinopathy, it is, uh, I already told you, it has been classified as non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Now, this non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy is being subdivided into four more types, which is called as mild non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, moderate non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy or NPDR, severe NPDR and very severe NPDR. So, these are the four subtypes of NPDR, which is mild, moderate, severe and very severe. Okay. And the next uh, classification of diabetic retinopathy is proliferative uh, diabetic retinopathy. Now, why they have been classified uh, as non-proliferative and proliferative is, uh, first, let me highlight on proliferative diabetic retinopathy, meaning thereby there is neovascularization or there are new vessels on the optic disc. So if new vessels are encountered, it is uh, diagnosed as proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Now coming to non-proliferative, why it has been categorized as mild, moderate, severe, and very severe is uh, definitely depending on the severity of progression of diabetic retinopathy. First is the mild NPDR in which at least one microaneurysm is present in the retina and there are retinal hemorrhages, and hard or soft exudates uh, present in the retina. These soft exudates are also called as the cotton wool spots. So a uh, characteristic feature of mild NPDR is microaneurysm, retinal hemorrhage, and hard or soft exudates. Then moving over to moderate NPDR. What is moderate NPDR? In moderate NPDR also, there are microaneurysm present in at least one quadrant of the eye. Now, uh, as you already must be knowing, the main four quadrants of the eye are superior, inferior, medial, and lateral. Okay, so when microaneurysm is present in at least one quadrant of the eye, there are soft exudates uh, called as cotton wool spots. And in moderate NPDR, how it differs from mild NPDR is it has a characteristic venous beading. Okay, now moving over to the severe. NPDR. In severe NPDR, there are three characteristic features out of which any one is present. So the three characteristic features in diabetic retinopathy are microaneurysms and retinal hemorrhages, in, sorry, intraretinal hemorrhages in all four quadrants, venous beading, and there are intraretinal microvascular abnormalities also called as IRMA. Let me uh, simplify this for you. If it is severe or very severe NPDR, then these three characteristic features are to be highlighted. In severe NPDR, any one of the three features are present, meaning thereby either there will be microaneurysms or venous beading, or this IRMA, meaning intraretinal microvascular abnormalities. In very severe NPDR, any two of these three features must be present, which are, again, microaneurysm, venous beading, and this intraretinal microvascular abnormalities. So this is the main difference between the severe and the very severe NPDR. To highlight on the case, can, I, can we go back to the previous slide, Ritika? Previous slide, the case scenario one. 
Yes, please. Now, this patient has uh, come to you with the ophthalmology reports, which shows microaneurysm, infraretinal hemorrhages. These are present in all the four quadrants. Venous beading is also present in two quadrants, that is superior and inferior. Uh, and in addition to that, intraretinal microaneurysms or IRMA are present in inferior quadrant. So out of these three characteristic features, which we have highlighted, all the three are present in this patient. So this patient is categorized into very severe NPDR. I hope I was clear in my explanation. Anything else you would all like to know regarding this case, please write it on the chat box. We'll be taking the questions from there.